Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time and it is time to talk about the balance changes coming to Brawl Stars in this upcoming update. And guys, we've got 24 balance changes coming. And in case you missed it guys, earlier I released my video on a complete breakdown of M's in my M's Olympic video. If you did miss that, make sure you go check it out as soon as this video is done and make sure you subscribe for more update sneak peeks because we got more changes. And you're not going to want to miss it. Okay, we're going to go through these in alphabetical order, starting off with 8-Bit. 8-Bit is getting a 6% nerf to his attack damage. At max level, each laser is going from 476 damage down to 448 damage. Now, for reference, 8-Bit still deals 7% more damage than Colt does with a single attack. Out of the 30 brawlers in the game, he'll require one more laser, meaning one sixth of a full attack, one more hit to take out about half of them, which actually isn't really a big deal, honestly, because we're just talking about one laser. However, it will take him one max hit in order for him to now take out El Primo and Frank, and then also Nita as well. Even after his last nerf, 8-Bit has one of the highest win rates across all modes, and he's definitely one of the best brawlers in the game, especially on those maps that are really long range. Hopefully, this is going to help tone him down a bit, but I still think that he's going to be very usable since he still out DPSs both Colt and Rico, and honestly, most of his 1v1 interactions won't change very much. Next, we have BB, who is getting two nerfs. First of all, is a 2% nerf to her health. At max level, she's going from 6,160 health down to 5,880 health, which puts her between Nita at 5,600 health and Pam at 6,020 health. Out of all the brawlers, 37% of them will all be able to take out BB with one less hit, one less projectile, which really isn't a huge difference. The biggest changes is that El Primo will now be able to take BB out with only three complete attacks rather than four, and Jesse and Penny will be able to take BB out with only five attacks rather than six. Now for her second nerf, BB's super damage is receiving a 10% nerf. At max level, it's going from 1,400 damage to 1,260 damage. Honestly guys, I don't see, see this changing very much because BB rarely actually relies on her super to do super well regardless. I could be wrong. BB was one of the best brawlers in the game and I actually think that she's still going to be very viable after these two small changes to her. Up next is Bo who is getting a rework to the pattern of his super. Here you can see the attack pattern and it's the same pattern as ticks, basically. If you're playing a 10 man mode or you are on the true blue team, both yours and the enemy's Bo's super will follow this pattern and will look just like this. If you are true red, Bo's on your team, or the enemy's team will be mirrored and look like this. I did a video a while back explaining the difference between true red and true blue, um, if you're curious about what that exactly means. Now, like I've said in the past, I am a huge fan of removing randomness in brawlers like this. It's gonna be easier to utilize your super as bow. It's also gonna be easier to play around if you're playing against bow. Um, I think overall it's probably going to be a nerf ish to bow because it'll be a little bit easier for people to know exactly how to uh, disarm the mines and to look for them as well um, but regardless i'm really glad that supercell made this change now next we have brock who's getting a 20 percent buff to his incendiary star power it's going from 500 damage per second to 600 damage per second the more this star power gets buffed Honestly, the more I start seeing that it's being more useful. Um, I don't think this is enough to make a whole lot of people start using the star power, but I'm telling you guys, you should probably at least start trying it out. It's not the best in a lot of situations, but there are quite a few situations, especially in Bounty and Heist, where it can make a big difference. Remember, Rocket number four doesn't actually increase your total damage over the course of an entire match unless you actually take the time to stop and reload your shots. It does a little bit because if you die, then you, re you respawn with all four shots, but you, you get the idea. On the other hand, Incendiary offers a bit of control. It helps you check those bushes. Um, and in some situations, it'll actually increase the damage to your tax and keep players pushed back. I'm not saying Incendiary is going to be better than Rocket number four after this buff but I think that it's at least to the point where it's gonna be worth trying now. Next is Crow getting a 25% buff to his extra toxic star power. 
The damage reduction is going from 16% all the way up to 20% to enemy players that are poisoned. This is a big change, and I honestly think it's going to make it a very solid star power. This, this changes things quite a lot, and I'm actually thinking about doing an in-depth video covering exactly how many interactions this star power changes for Crow. I haven't done it yet because it's a lot of math, and <laughs> I do love math, but I still gotta make videos for you guys, so that takes time. But I do have a feeling that this is going to be pretty huge for Crow. The thing is with Extra Toxic is that it's really hard to put a value on its benefit, because you rarely see the overall benefit in, you know, in just like 1v1 interactions and stuff. Because of that, people rarely select it for use, but, I, but just like with Brock, I really do think you should keep your eye on it and uh, try using it after this update if you have both star powers. Daryl is getting two buffs. The first is his Steel Hoops star power, which is getting a shielding buff by 20%. This means that his shielding is going from 25% up to 35, sorry, just 30 damage, 30% 30 damage reduction. During the 3.5 seconds of his shielding, this will be like he has 8,372 health, which is a couple hundred more than El Primo. So think of like El Primo with Bull's shotgun, or just with Daryl's shotgun. <laughs> I definitely think that Daryl was the hardest of the three assassins to play in the last meta, and I'm really hopeful that this makes him a little bit more competitive. With that said though, I'm pretty excited about the change to his second star power. Rather than Daryl immediately reloading his attacks after his roll, his rolling reload star power is being reworked so that his ro reload speed will now double for 5 seconds after using his super. And because Daryl has a reload speed of 2.4 seconds, this means that he should be able to unload 4 complete attacks in 5 seconds after he reloads. This is of course if you're spamming your shots. Now Daryl has one of the highest damaging attacks in the game, and that means he'll be able to unload 12,000 544 damage in five seconds, which is crazy. Now that's actually assuming that he has zero ammo when he first starts rolling. So it's it's a little different than that. He can actually unload a lot more, but you know, the thing is with Daryl is that he's obviously gonna be vulnerable to damage during that time. So it's going to be a matter of him outbursting his enemy, you know, before they can outburst him. That being said, um, there are very few brawlers that have the burst potential to outburst Daryl in that type of situation. So we'll see how this will actually play things out. I still don't know how it's going to do in comparison to his Steel Hoops star power, but I'm really excited to try it out and uh, I'll let you guys know what I think. Next we have El Primo who is getting some rebalancing done to his two star powers. You could, you could probably guess it that El Fuego is getting a buff and Meteor Rush is getting a nerf. El Fuego's damage is getting a 20% buff, and the damage is increasing from 1,000 to 1,200 damage over 4 seconds after he lands on a target. Now, Meteor Rush's speed boost is getting a 10% nerf, meaning that the speed boost is going from 28% down to 25%. This is a movement speed of 3.2 tiles per second, which means that Rico with Robo Retreat will now very slightly be faster than El Primo with Meteor Rush. Honestly, I'm really not surprised to see these changes to El Primo star powers at all. I, I'm i probably still only going to use Meteor Rush because I play El Primo mostly in Brawl Ball and that speed boost is just so helpful when you're playing him in Brawl Ball. Now the damage boost is definitely gonna be beneficial for El Fuego and it's starting to sound a little bit more appealing, but my guess is most people are gonna stick with Meteor Rush because I mean, Brawl Ball, he's so good at Brawl Ball regardless and the Meteor Rush just makes him better. Gene is getting another buff to his Magic Puff's healing, this time by 33%. It's going from 300 healing per second to 400 healing per second to any friendly players that are within that radius around him. It's a pretty substantial buff. I've said it in the past, I'm gonna say it again. I still don't think that this is a very good star power for Gene, and Spirit Slap is so good right now. The reason why this is not a good star power is the fact that you should rarely bunch up and, you know, Gene, it, it's not a good idea. Also, Gene does not have a very fast movement speed, so it's not like he can really use it to, like, chase down teammates and help save them. Next time Supercell buffs this, I think a Radius buff is probably going to be the best way to go for, for Magic Puffs, or they should probably consider doing something different. or. Maybe we're doing a little bit of a rework with it. Now, Leon is getting a buff and a nerf. 
First of all, his super's invisibility duration is getting a 14% nerf. It's going from seven seconds down to six seconds, which I honestly think might be a little bit too much of a nerf. I'm willing to see how it'll impact Leon in the long run, but I don't know. It, I felt like he was pretty good. I mean, obviously, Supercell's looking at the use rates and the win rates, and they're making decisions based off of that. But now, secondly, his Invisiheal healing is getting a 25% buff and is going from 800 to 1,000 healing per second. Now, for six entire seconds, that's 6,000 healing, which is a ton of fast healing. I feel like Invisiheal gets value in fewer situations than his Smoke Trail Star power does. So I don't really know if this is gonna make Invisiheal more beneficial to use more frequently, but when you're using the star power and it does happen to get value, it's gonna get massive in value and maybe it'll even be able to get value more frequently because of this. Now Nita is getting two pretty sizable buffs, okay? Now her HP is getting a 5% buff and at max level she's going from 5,320 to 5,600 health. This means that she's going to require one more hit from 14 out of the 29 brawlers, which isn't a whole lot. Um, she's going to require one more complete attack to get taken out from 8-Bit, BB, Poco, and Tick. Once again, it's not a whole lot. It is something though. But where the kicker is, is that she's getting an 8% buff to her attack damage. At max level, her attack is going from 1,036 damage to 1,120 damage, and that is hugely significant and will change a lot of her 1v1 interactions. Nita will now require one less attack to take out each of the following brawlers. Barley, Bull, Crow, Daryl, Jesse, Leon, Mortis, Other Nitas, Penny, Piper, Poco, Rico, Rosa, Sandy, Spike, and Terra. In case you weren't counting, that is 16 of the 29 brawlers in the game, and that is a huge buff to Nita. Okay, now previously Nita had lower use rates across all trophy counts, and she had the fifth lowest win rate above the 700 trophies. She's actually had a decent win rate below six or 700 trophies, but she actually still wasn't being used very much. I actually think that these two buffs to Nita are going to be uh, just massive. I actually wouldn't be surprised if she became one of the best brawlers to play in Gem Grab, Brawl Ball, and even Heist if you have her Hyper Bear star power. This is gonna change the meta, at least to some extent, and I'm really excited to, uh, to try it out. Now Penny is getting an attack damage buff by 7%. At max level, it's going from 1,176 to 1,260 damage for every attack. Now this means that Penny will be able to take out the following brawlers with one less attack. 8-Bit, BB, Bo, Bull, Carl, Jean, Pam, Rosa, and Shelly. That's nine brawlers, which does make a pretty big difference. Every season, I push all my brawlers to 600 trophies with randoms, and I'm probably going to increase that to 650 tr uh, trophies with each season because it's not as hard as it used to be. Uh, Penny, though, has consistently been one of the last brawlers that I pushed just simply because she doesn't fit into the competitive meta as much as she used to. I'm really excited about this change and I hope that it puts her in a good spot. I'm actually kind of a little disappointed that Jessie didn't get a buff because although Jessie is one of the best brawlers below 700 trophies, she is one of the worst above 700 trophies and yeah. I'm still hoping for a star power buff to pet to, to Jesse. Now Piper is getting a main attack damage nerf. A whopping 2%. Yeah, that's right guys. At max range, at max level, it's going from 2,296 damage to 2,240 damage with her regular attack. That's not really very much at all. And if you actually ignore the star powers, this, this doesn't change a single interaction with any of the brawlers at max range. The one difference though, is that she will no longer be able to one-shot an enemy tick while she's using her ambush star power. He will now survive with 40 HP. <laughs> My guess is that Supercell just wanted to help save the, the helpless ticks from getting one-shot from, you know, without a chance. <laughs> Other than that, I really doubt that this will change very much at all. Poco is getting a buff to his Decapo star power by 33%. The healing to his teammates when he uses his attacks to heal them is going to be increased from 600 to 800 healing. This is a really good buff to Poco, and in my opinion, Decapo was in a really good spot before this buff. Not used very often because 
it was so easy to use his screeching solo to, you know, very obvious benefit from that type of a situation. But I'm guessing that if players were not using it now, they're going to be using it. And I mean, honestly, this is this is definitely going to be a star power you're going to want to use, especially, I mean, obviously in those team-based modes. Keep your eyes peeled for it, guys. It could be a new OP star power. Now, Sandy is getting three nerfs. Thank you. Goodness, holy cow, guys. First of all, his super duration is getting a 25% nerf. It's going from 12 seconds down to nine seconds. I think that that is totally fair and I'm excited to see how it feels. Additionally, his healing wind star power is getting a 16% nerf and its healing is going from 300 to 250 healing per second. Also think that that's justified. Lastly, Sandy's health is getting a 5% nerf. At max level, he's going from 5,600 health down to 5,320, which is the same as Mortis's and Poco's health. This means that Sandy will get taken out with one less hit from 16 of the brawlers, but the biggest interaction changes are gonna be between BB, Crow, Nita, Poco, and Tick, who Sandy will now survive one less complete shot from. That's pretty significant. Honestly, I kind of wonder if San Supercell's hitting Sandy just a little bit too hard with the nerf hammer. His mechanics are still really great, so there's a chance he'll still be good, but th that's a lot of nerfs. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he's still okay, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he kind of fell out of the meta. We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at him and I'll let you guys know what I think. Now, Spike is getting a 33% buff to his Fertilize star power. Its healing is being increased from 600 to 800 healing per second, which is a ton of healing. With five ticks of healing, we're talking about a possible 4,000 health healed over, over those five seconds, which is a lot more than Spike's max HP currently is. Now, I feel like Curveball is so beneficial because it makes it so much easier to hit Spike's regular attacks. But this buff, guys, I actually think it's going to make Fertilize the better star power in most situations. At least in the hands of the right player who can still, uh, you know, skillfully hit Spike, Spike's main attack without using Curveball. Okay, guys, and lastly, we've got Tick who is getting a buff and a nerf. Supercell is reverting the nerf to his attack duration. This means that the time that the mini mines are staying on the ground is getting a 25% buff. It's going from... 1.6 seconds that you know that has been for a couple of weeks up back up to two seconds now also takes automatic reload star power is getting a 23 percent nerf meaning that the reload speed boost is going from 13 percent down to 10 percent i like the nerf to ticks automatic reload star power but i am not a fan of increasing the duration of ticks attack back up to two seconds personally i felt like that duration was very frustrating to play against and you just have to wait so long before you can move, and honestly, even 1.6 seconds still feels like Tick is pretty strong. Now, after speaking with Supercell, it looks like since his nerf, Tick's usage rate just plummeted. Like, really, just basically dropped off, which means that, you know, that's why they're bringing it back. So, we'll see what happens, but I think that he's, he's going to go back to being just as strong as he was before. Well, not just as strong. Slightly almost as strong as he was before. And that is the complete list of all 24 balance changes coming to Brawl Stars in the next update. What are you excited for? And what do you feel like Supercell missed, guys? Let me know in the comment section below and do not forget to subscribe for more sneak peeks for this update. They're coming, they're coming. We got more for you. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And for now, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.